Welcome to another episode of the Wandering Watercolor. Today we are painting a Halloween painting party pack. Let's get started. So this is the, the page for the painting party. And it's basically, this is the simplest one. I made three different levels, easy, medium, and hard. This is the, the easiest one. And as always, you want, you want to make sure you have a place to mix your colors. Uh, color palette, this is the one that I'm using. Um, two jars of water on the side. And then also uh, a paper towel or a rag or something to help you along is always very useful. And basically, um, this is going to be pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or you can always email me or whatever works. And I will leave, uh, in the description, I'll leave a detailed um, review of all of the supplies that I use and everything, if, if you're interested, or whatever you have will work just fine. This paper is very good quality, so it'll handle um, almost anything, really. It'll handle alcohol markers, oil, ink, acrylic, pencils. I honestly haven't found anything that doesn't work yet, um, but just in case, that's why I always say almost anything. So for this, it'll be very straightforward. The very first thing you need is just some orange paint and a good amount of water, just so we can have enough mixed up to cover all three of these pumpkins for the Halloween themed painting party. And there are 10 images or 10 of the same exact image in the pack. So you can have a party with up to 10 people, um, unless you end up buying more, in which case you can as many as with as many people as you want, depending on how many packs you buy. So, basically we have our color mixed up here. And we're just gonna go ahead and cover all three of these. And we're just going right through here. You can see I'm going over the little black spots um, it's fine because the ink that I use to make these is waterproof. It's not going to um, negatively impact anything if you just paint right on top. It will work just fine. And you can see I'm just using the paint and just going straight over, almost like a just a flat wash, just to cover in the base layer for these pumpkins here. And if you're using anything else like uh, markers or acrylic or oil, honestly, the approach would be pretty similar to all of them. The only difference is I kind of try to keep in mind what the lighter colors are just because I'm using watercolor. Uh, if you're using something like oil or gouache, you can always just layer regardless of what color is lighter or darker. I'm just gonna mix up a little more. And just, oh, that's a little strong. Might need a little more water. And just kind of, same thing. Cover it all in. And just go nice and easy. It doesn't have to be fast. Um, the shapes here are pretty simple, and there's only four, maybe five colors that we'll use. That's why this one is the easy pack. And you can see that a lot of the details are already just kind of like laid out. So you just go in and add some color. It's pretty straightforward. And then the next thing we're gonna cover is the, kind of like the ground that they're staying on. You just wanna get some green. Any color green really works. And you're just gonna cover it in just like, same thing, just a flat wash. 
going all the way through here, all the way to the end. And you see how quickly we laid that in. And now while we have our green here, we're, we're just going to throw a little bit of brown in it. And uh, I forgot to mention, if in, in your palette, whatever you're using, if you don't have orange, you can always just mix yellow and red. It's pretty simple. And for this one, we're adding a little bit of brown just to make it a little more earthy toned. And then we're going to use this for the stems of these pumpkins on the side here. And just kind of lay it in. I'm going to dry off my brush. I had a little too much paint on my brush, so I'm going to dry it off a little bit. And then fill that in. There we go. Rinse my brush. And then I'm going to get some of the yellow here. And I'm just going to fill in these uh, windows back here. Just right in there like that. I'm also going to use the same yellow for the buckle here on the hat of this pumpkin. Just the buckle. I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to clear up some of this green. But I'm going to leave some of it on there because the next step is I'm going to mix it in with the yellow. The, we just want it to have like a slight hint of green, not too overpowering, so that we can go ahead and mix up the color for the moon that's behind them. But we don't want too much green, and we honestly don't want too much yellow either. You want it to be a little lighter of a color. Get a little more yellow. A little more transparent. And you do want to make sure you have plenty of water in there just because it's a large area to cover. So you want to make sure you have enough once you start coloring it in. Okay, so this looks like a... I'm going to add a little more water. Just a little more so we have more. And we just start going from here. You can paint right over these tree branches just because they're they're pure black, so they'll st you'll be able to see them coming through. And then just carefully around the stem. And then I'm gonna stop at the hat here. I don't want to go into that edge. And then underneath here, same thing going in coloring it all in don't worry if you add a little more water it, um, the paper is meant to handle water so it'll work just fine and then continuing on on the side pulling the water out just like that And getting some more of the color, finishing it in. And just kind of taking my time, especially in the little, in the trickier areas like right here. I don't want to get it in the stem, but I do feel comfortable just laying it all over the edge of the house here. So, okay, so this looks great. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And now we're gonna go back to the pumpkins. So we have our orange. I'm gonna add a little more orange here. But we wanna mix up a darker orange. So we're gonna get a little bit of the brown. And what we're going to add are the shadows.
We want more water though. We want it to be a little more transparent. And we also want to have enough mixed in for all three of them. So that's why I'm mixing so much of it here. Okay, perfect. The first one is this one on the side. And what we're going to do is, imagine if you have a sphere in, and the light is coming kind of like from up and behind, you'll have kind of like a, a shadow on the bottom of the sphere. So what we're doing here is we're just going to go like this. Just a straight shot. And then we can add a little bit for the, for the ridges. You know how you can, the shadow will be able to outline the ridges here like that. Same right here, just a little bit. Maybe give them a little bit of a curve to show that it's... Because pumpkins are curved, like that. And then inside of the edge that's carved in, that's in the shadow, so that will put a little bit there. There. And here on the side, just because it's behind this pumpkin, we're, we're going to add a little more shadow like that. Just to show depth. And then a little bit in the back here, a little bit in the back, and a little bit over here just to show that edge again. And then inside here where the teeth are, same thing, it's in the shadow part, so you definitely want to outline it. And see how much more dimension that gives it? And then now we can proceed with the other two. So first, here for the brim of the hat, we definitely want to show that edge like that. That shadow that's being cast from that, that brim, just like that. And then we're going to go in down here and same thing, kind of follow that curvature of the pumpkin going up like this. And then in between those grooves, Going in like that. Same as here. A little bit like that. And then filling in the carved in parts. A little bit here. Just the, the inner portion that you can see that makes sense because it's receding into the, the head of the pumpkin. So it, it will be darker, just like here. Okay, and then the next one is this one. Same thing. We're just going to go along with the curvature here. Like that. Those grooves there. Fill those in like that. A little bit here bit here in the teeth and the eye here that's carved out and then we can also add a little more shadow here just because similar it's behind the front one give it a little more dimension and rinse my brush I'm gonna step back for a moment just take a look at it Okay, I think that looks excellent so far. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll grab a little bit of brown and mix it in with the yellow here. We don't want it to be too strong of a brown. We just want it to be a little kind of like yellow brown for the, for the hat. So the hat, this white part, we're just going to go ahead and uh, fill it in slowly. Like that, and underneath the hat here on the inside, and the other edge, just going very slowly. That's perfect. And then we can just go ahead and grab a lot more brown, just more pure brown. 
and just go ahead and fill in this part. I put too much paint on my brush, I'm gonna take some of it off. Put that on the side. And then inside of that little belt buckle. And we're good on that. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. It's looking pretty good, we're almost done. The last part is... I'm gonna grab some of the blue here. Any, any blue that you use is fine, it's totally fine. And I'm gonna mix up a lot of it because we're gonna cover the whole sky in the background. And we're just gonna go ahead and start filling it in. Again, don't worry about the really black parts of the background or the tree. You're just going all the way around slowly. Like that. And just continue on. Make sure... Oops, see, I got a little bit in the moon there. But that's fine. I didn't mess up too badly, so I could just keep going. And the bat. I'm just going to avoid the eyes of the bat, because I want them to be white. Filling in all of that. Like that. And just the last bit over here. And I'm just going to step back again just for a moment. And yeah, that looks pretty good. We are done. Okay, so that was it for that one. That's the easy Halloween painting party pack. And I'll have the other two, the medium and the hard, coming up here soon. Um, if you have questions, just leave me a comment, shoot me an email. All the details for the supplies are in the description. And uh, I will see you on the next one.